Hello, Robert Neely here. I just wanted to make some comments about how we might be able to use hypnosis to deal with psychosomatic uh, issues. Um, and including in when we think of psychosomatic issues, we think about migraine, <clears throat> about chronic fatigue, tension, headache, uh, irritable bowel, pain, physical pain, immunity issues, maybe malignancies, uh, burns, uh, asthma, eczema, peptic ulcers, so there's, a, there's a whole long list of, you know, we have a body and, uh, and when we have a problem it affects our body, it affects our emotions, it affects us as, as a totality. So um, there are various ways that hypnosis can be used and uh, used very effectively to help deal and heal psychosomatic uh, problems. One of the things that we can do when someone comes with with some kind of um, some kind of psychosomatic problem uh, is look at the emotion that is a component of their experience. For example, um, a woman told me that she is having a, a lot of problem with with migraine. It was causing a lot of suffering, missing time at work, and so on. And when we looked at the emotion that was part of the migraine, I'm not saying caused it, but was a component of the migraine situation, she, she discovered in our exploration that she had a fear of being with other people, being in a social situation. And the fear somehow, if she had to go out socially, the fear was always there and it was part of the migraine. And I'm not saying the fear caused the migraine, and I'm not saying the migraine caused the fear. It's just that they were the, the fear was a component consistently of her uh, migraine problem. And so we were able to look in, in hypnosis about how she'd overcome other fears, about how the vulnerability that she experienced with uh, with groups of people, with strangers, how that vulnerability could be addressed. <coughs> to uh, piggyback on one of Ericsson's uh, uh, favourite ways of dealing with something, <coughs> to develop calluses on her her experience, so that by gradually getting into uh, uh, unfamiliar situations, she could become less triggered and more able to just be herself. So her fear, when the fear was dealt with and she was able in hypnosis to, to get past that, to let that go and instead to be curious, to be interested, uh, to be open, to feel secure, to feel safe in herself. When she had those emotions, then she didn't need to have the, the migraine. <clears throat> there was a, a man who in his uh, mid-30s uh, had uh, irritable bowel uh, problems. And we looked at the emotion that was always there when he had, when the irritable bowel was at its worst. And uh, not surprisingly, an irritable bowel happens when there's an irritable person. He was getting very irritated. He was actually resentful of the family, his family of origin the way they were controlling, the way they were manipulative, the way they seemed to keep him young. So he was angry, he was resentful about the, the, his, his reaction to his parents. And again, I'm not saying that the irritable bowel was caused by the irritation. I'm not saying it was caused by the anger, by the resentment. It's just that the, they were a component. They were... the the anger, the resentment, was always there when the irritable bowel was at its worst. <clears throat> so we looked at, hypnotically, we looked at how to deal with his resentment. And he found that by accepting, oh, okay, my parents are my parents. They did what they did. They didn't know any better. He was able to feel more peaceful. <clears throat> when they started to try and tell him what to do and control him, he found that he could learn to be calmer and more self-contained and less irritable.
in himself. And with that, the irritability of his bowel also subsided. So uh, in looking at uh, various uh, psychosomatic problems, looking at the accompanying emotion can be a beautiful way to explore uh, hypnotically in particular, a beautiful way of exploring what preferred emotion, what solution emotion may be more useful instead of the problem emotion that was associated with the condition, with the problem. Also, <clears throat> I think it's, it's very much underappreciated that hypnosis is a vehicle, is a way of helping to deal with physiological experiences directly. <clears throat> we can help someone in hypnosis to change their physiology. We know that if we say to someone, uh, what do you like to do? I like to, to walk on the beach. Okay, if we ask someone to imagine that they're walking on the beach, they can have the experience of walking on the beach. We, we know that. But also, it's possible if we ask someone to remember, for example, what it's like on a cold day to put their hands in front of a heater and let their hands feel warm. By remembering the experience, it can help to change the circulation and the hands can actually warm up. <clears throat> we know that uh, the sensations uh, that can be painful when we get when we get some chronic pain, you know, it kind of really haunts us and we suffer from it. <clears throat> but Erickson said a person can wear glasses and be totally unaware of the sensations of the glasses on the bridge of the nose and the ears. A person can be standing and be totally unaware of the sensations in their feet, can be sitting and totally unaware of the sensations of where their body contacts the chair. The sensations are noticeable, but potentially noticeable, and do not have to be noticed. So we know this, and uh, so uh, helping someone to change their physiology can be very helpful in dealing with the psychosomatic issues. For example, <clears throat> uh, some people who with get irritable bowel find that, that it's comforting to put a heat pack on their stomach. Somehow the warmth of their, of their heat pack helps to soothe and things settle down. Someone can be asked to imagine this, to remember this, and they can then experience the warmth and have a physiological experience of their belly, their stomach, feeling warmer and getting some relief. <clears throat> I was at a conference, an international conference years ago, and there were two experts there talking about the effectiveness that they found of using hypnosis with migraine, <clears throat> using physiological approaches. And one of them was from America and one from Scandinavia. And one of them, I forget which, said that, that he had been very uh, helpful to a lot of people with migraine <clears throat> by using what he called autogenic training, where he helped someone to learn how to warm their hands up and cool their forehead. And when someone learned that they could warm their hands, cool their forehead, that made a huge impact on the intensity and frequency uh, of migraine sufferers. The interesting thing for me was that the other person who also had the figures to show how helpful his approach was, he taught people to have a different physiological learning it helped them to cool their hands and warm their forehead. The opposite. Both had excellent results and both, each of them had their own separate way of doing this, which involved physiological changes. 
uh, my eldest son, when he was at high school, uh, made some pocket money by curing his friend's warts. He got a reputation for being able to cure warts. And uh, <clears throat> people used to pay him 20 cents and he would say, I want you to close your eyes and just imagine that your warts are shrinking, that they're getting pale, that the blood circulation is going from them. And you can expect that over the next week or two weeks that the warts will disappear. He got some good results. Now, he was not an expert hypnotist <laughs> as a teenager, but he was able, using focusing and imagination, to help people to change their physiology and cure their warts. <clears throat> the other uh, aspect that uh, can be so helpful with, with psychosomatic is, uh, problems, when we have a migraine, we get migraine or we get uh, asthma or eczema or something, we just want to get rid of it. And sometimes it can be helpful, instead of getting rid of something, to actually listen to it, to, to wonder what might this problem be telling us. Uh, <clears throat> don't know whether you heard that saying, death is just the body's way of telling us to slow down. But I remember a woman who had been uh, doing secretarial work and she developed a, a repetitive stress problem in her right elbow. And <clears throat> part of our conversation, I asked her to listen to the elbow and to wonder what it might be trying to tell her. Now, that sounds like a crazy thing. She's got a pain, it's phys physical. What, what can talking, what can hypnosis do to help something that's physical? Anyhow, I asked her the question. And once she got over the, got past the strangeness of the question and reflected, she said, I want to quit my job and have a baby. When she said that, her elbow from that moment began to settle. And within a very short time, she had no problem with it at all. So in uh, exploring what we can do with psychosomatic problems, with physical problems, which may be a result or be associated with an emotional problem or just be physiological problems in and of themselves, <clears throat> It's always crucial that we remember we're never dealing, we're never treating migraine, we're never treating irritable bowel, we're never treating asthma and so on. There's always a person. And because people are individuals, it's going to make, be hugely helpful to explore with each individual person just how come this is problematic to you. What's missing for you in particular as a unique individual, that if you had access to it, that if you could connect with it, if you could reconnect with it, if you could learn, what is it that would make a difference for you when we have that question? It helps us to refine and define and clarify our focus and the effectiveness of our work. So I'm often offering some ideas about what we can do here with psychosomatic issues. <clears throat> Uh, I, it's, what I'm saying is not sufficient, it's not all-encompassing, it's not a matter of, oh, if you do this, you'll cure everybody, but I'm offering these ideas in case they can be helpful to you as additional ways to bring into your practice to be able to help people with these uh, often very debilitating problems. So thanks for listening, and I'd love to hear what you uh, find useful when you try some of these ideas. Thank you.